So today I'm going to present work that was done by a large group as well, and I'll be talking about oral cholera vaccination. So we often think about cholera being an old disease. We know we can prevent it with clean water, with basic hygiene. But first, I wanted to start with a map of cholera today. So you can see that cholera continues to, to cause a great burden of disease globally. And if we look at the places where we're still seeing cholera, we have the most of it in Central Africa, also in, in Asia and in India, and some in Central America. Um, <coughs> These are the countries where, where diseases and caused by poverty continue to, to claim lives and where cholera remains an acute threat. So I'm going to talk about South Sudan. We heard a little bit this morning from one of the presentations. But uh, South Sudan is the youngest country in the world. So it uh, became independent from Sudan in 2011. And civil war broke out in 2013. And now we have a dire situation where nearly 2 million of the 12 million people who live in South Sudan have been forced to leave their homes and are living in, in internal displaced camps in the country, often with very poor access to, to basic hygiene and water. So in the last two years, we've had over 7,000 cases of medically attended cholera in South Sudan. So I mentioned clean water and uh, hygiene, but there's also a vaccine available which can help protect against cholera. There are three vaccines pre-qualified by WHO, and the picture here shows Shankol, which is um, an oral vaccine. All of them are oral vaccines. It's fairly cheap at just under $2 uh, a vial, and two doses of this vaccine, given two weeks apart, um, has been shown successful at preventing cholera and can be used in a reactive manner. So after an epidemic has been declared it, in mass vaccination campaigns helping uh, protect the individuals at risk. But the major obstacle here is, is vaccine shortage. It's made by one company in India and supply of this vaccine is completely outstripped by demand. I showed you the countries where, where we still have cholera, the, the population at risk, there simply isn't enough vaccine for, for all the places that are suffering cholera today. Sorry. Um, so cholera in 2015, we had an outbreak in, in Juba, so the capital of South Sudan. This is a graph showing the epidemic curve. The original, the first case was traced back to uh, May in the camp for IDPs in Juba. And the um, decision to use the vaccination was here. So we could see the number of cases was increasing exponentially and uh, MSF and the Ministry of Health chose to include OCV as part of the, the multidimensional response. And then there was discussion on how to use it, requests for the vaccines, and we actually started a campaign here. So quite a lot after a lot of the, the cases had already come, but this is a country where long epidemics often occur for eight months and they just seem to go on and on and on. So why Juba? This was the nation's capital and it's a place where there's lots of uh, population movement. So the risk for cholera going to elsewhere in the country, especially places in active conflict, was there and, and we wanted to stop this happening because it was uh, seen in 2014. <coughs> And I mentioned there's limited doses available. So here, what's novel about what we did was the dosing strategy. This was a one-dose campaign. And I mentioned the recommendation to use OCV as a reactive tool is to give two doses of the vaccine. Um, we chose, uh, together with the Ministry of Health and the National Cholera Task Force, to, to give one dose of the vaccine. Um, because there were a limited number of vaccines available, even to cover the whole of the city with two doses. But also there was um, immunological studies showing that one dose of the vaccine could also elicit an, um, an immune response. And mathematical modeling studies showing that 
being able to give one dose to double the number of people could essentially save lives. Um, and there were preliminary trial information available about using a single dose. The idea being um, when we can reach a lot of people in the, the, in the population, the indirect benefit of the vaccine, we can also see protection in people who are unvaccinated. So herd immunity could, could occur. So the campaign started at the end of July. As I mentioned, we offered a single dose of Shankle to, um, to individuals aged over one year. You can see a map of Juba here. We, we'd had to identify ta and target the at-risk parts of Juba because we still didn't have enough vaccines to cover the whole city. Um, there were three basic areas, and we also targeted high-risk groups such as healthcare workers, prisoners, and um, we used large fixed sites, and we also used limited social mobilization because we were only offering the vaccine in these areas. There was some concern from ourselves and also other stakeholders that the population from these neighboring areas that we weren't offering the vaccine might come into the, the area and we didn't want there to spark civil unrest in a country that can be quite problematic to work in sometimes. So um, limited social mobilization and then just after the campaign, we did a vaccine coverage survey using geospatial, spatially random sample of population in these three areas. So the aim that I'm going to present today was is the feasibility, the coverage we achieved doing this targeted uh, campaign and the vaccine effectiveness. So we gave one dose and we want to estimate how, how effective was it at protecting cholera. Uh, protecting the population against cholera. So for the, the methods, these methods I'm referring to the, the effectiveness study. So we used a, a case control study and this was done in the realms of research um, and the protocol was approved by the National Ethical Review Board and also an international ERB in the summer months. Um, so we recruited cases of cholera just after the campaign at all of the different sites, uh, cholera treatment sites in, in Juba. And we also recruited a randomly selected uh, cohort of Juba's population, both in the, the vaccinated target areas and outside the vaccinated target areas, so all over the city of Juba. We wanted to ascertain vaccine status, so we asked the, the, both the cases and the cohort if they were vaccinated, and we asked to look at their, their vaccine cards to, to check. And to estimate vaccine effectiveness, we used a proportional hazard regression. So first, if I give you some results on feasibility, we vaccinated, um, or. 143,000 people, more or less, in the main campaign in the space of a week. So this was in the three main areas in Juba and the high-risk population. And then following the main campaign, there were a further uh, 22,000 people vaccinated as part of a comprehensive targeted intervention. So new cases that arrived um, in the treatment centers, we then went to their immediate neighborhood and offered the vaccine together with uh, water and sanitation measures and health promotion. So the vaccine coverage we estimated in the three main areas was nearly 70%, so 68.8% with uh, these confidence intervals. And this was considering the whole population, so anybody over one year old right up to um, older people. So for vaccine effectiveness, there were um, 87 suspected cases in the period after the campaign, and 34 of them were classified as cholera positive um, using multiple diagnostic techniques. So we used a culture 
in country and also internationally. And we used PCR as the gold standard uh, internationally. And we were also using um, rapid tests, enriched and direct rapid tests. And there is a poster looking at uh, a validation of the enriched testing method, which I would invite you all to have a look at because the findings are interesting. And um, so then we also had almost 900 cohort members. None of the cohort developed cholera during the, the follow-up period. And here you have our <coughs> vaccine effectiveness estimation. So we were looking at 80% unadjusted. So this is just considering the data as it is. We also adjusted for risk factors, like um, having access to water, living in a house with people who had had cholera. And uh, after adjusting for these confounders, our vaccine effective estimate was 89.6. So you might be wondering, those of you who know cholera vaccine, why it's so high. By using this case control um, methodology, sorry, case cohort methodology, we're actually considering not only the, the direct protection at an individual level, but also the indirect protection that can be caused by herd immunity. So we're able to gather these together, and it's therefore linked in with how many people in the population received the vaccine and were, were had additional protection. So limitations. Um, this is an observational study and in quite challenging field conditions. Um, ideally, to, to estimate vaccine effectiveness, we'd want to do a trial, but um, this is not, was not really feasible. Um, the, the study size is small. I think we have to uh, acknowledge that with 34 cases after confirmed cases um, after the vaccination campaign took place we really had no more cases of cholera in in juba so this um, can cause a limitation to the study but it, it puts us in this position of almost irony when we see that the success of our campaign can therefore limit our ability to to share the the findings on effectiveness but Despite this limitation, we did lots of different sensitivity analysis and, and are confident that our, our findings are what are true. Nearly 50% of the participants didn't have their vaccination cards on them. Um, so this could be a limitation. We used their self-reported vaccination status and we also used it when they had the card present. If we did a sensitivity analysis and excluded these individuals, we still had the same results. And I think we have to remember Juba and South Sudan is not, color is not new. So there's a potential that the people who were included in this study have, have experienced cholera, have been exposed to cholera in the past. And in this way, the vaccine could be a booster, if you like. So it may not be the same results if you're looking at a population that's completely naive to this disease. So for the discussion, I think um, You'll find this is important evidence for deciding on vaccine strategy, especially given the, the limited supply of OCV in the world today. We can see that a single dose of oral cholera vaccine offers a high level of protection against severe cholera, so medically attended cholera, and this is both at the direct level and also indirect protection caused by herd immunity. We should remember that a single dose is also logistically simpler. So if we're working in emergencies, finding the same people 14 days uh, later could be quite challenging. So until sufficient doses of OCDB are available, flexible alternative vaccination strategies are needed and highly targeted campaigns in, in urban populations are possible and single dose regimes should be considered. Our results from an outbreak in an urban context show that both are feasible and effective. So lastly, just to mention all of the people that collaborated in this study, we have Epicent, uh, John Hopkins, South Sudan Ministry of Health, Pasteur Institute, the WHO in South Sudan, and also all of the people in the MSF, and the field teams, which had the picture behind him.